Mind y'all, we have a cookout afterwards for graduation Sunday. Everybody's invited to stay, okay? So I uh, hope that all of y'all will be able to join us uh, for that as well. Welcome, welcome to the house of the Lord today. Glad to have you guys with us. For all of y'all joining us online as well, thank y'all for being here. Uh, we've got a great, great, great service uh, to lift up our Lord and Savior uh, today in his praise. Father God, we pray the power of your Holy Spirit will be upon us right now, Jesus. Lord, we've got lots of things to celebrate. We have birthday, we've got graduation, Father, and just the fact of the things that you have done inside of us, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you for that as well and so jesus do inside of us what we can't do inside of ourselves as well before we start out let's just sing happy birthday to danny leary i want to ready on the count of three ready here we go happy, happy birthday, birthday to you Woo! happy birthday to you Woo! happy birthday Stand up, let's praise God together this Good morning. morning. Come on. Y'all sing this out. I know you know this song. Great song. Listen to the words as they flow through. It's already. Presence, we 
come alive. Open up the doors. We are ready. We are ready. We're crying out for more. In your presence, we come alive. Open the doors and open up the doors. We are ready. We are ready. We're crying out for more. In your presence. Come alive, praise and rise endlessly. We lay our lives before the King. Who was and who is and who will always be. people said. Amen. Y'all grab a seat. Okay. And we are ready to see what all these cool announcements are and what we have coming up. Right after the service today, please go back to the Fellowship Hall and join us for a hamburger and some cake and some good uh, chips and stuff like that because we want to celebrate Seoul, our graduating senior. So please, please come and join us after this. We have plenty. I think the men are cooking like 100 hamburgers, and so we got plenty. Um, as far as activities this week, of course, we have youth tonight at 6, and then on Wednesday we have brown bags at 7, the choir meets for practice, always welcoming to anybody who wants to join in the choir. And then Saturday morning at 10, our worship team meets right here in the sanctuary. If you are ever in a bad spot on a Saturday morning and you just need to, you know, get in a better spot, just come sit and listen. It's just amazing to listen to them rehearse. We do have our mission trip coming up, and it will be in July. And we are getting ready, getting ready. We want definitely please pray for us. Um, but if you are at all interested in going on that mission trip, we're having a meeting here tonight at 5 to talk about all the details as far as that's concerned. Okay, and you can see this amazing sign over here made by our sign maker extraordinaire, Carmen. Uh, we have our rummage sale coming up. So some of us have been meeting on Friday afternoons. Please know you can bring donations up here. Honestly, we don't need clothes, but anything else, especially furniture. Furniture sells well. Like, go through your house. If you're tripping over something, bring it up here. We'll sell it. Um, we are, every, everything from the rummage sale will go toward the mission trip. And I put some signs out over here. If you have a place of business or you just know you could take it someplace so people could see, we'll put them out in the neighborhood. But that's June 3rd, and we're going to do it right out front on the other side of this wall so we have good visibility. And it's just going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. The youth are making hot dogs, and there's just going to be all, all kinds of things. And so you'll be hearing more, but just so you know. Also, we have tables for sale. If you want to do your own little sale, they're just $20 a table. Uh, if you will please join me in our St. Matthew Creed. At St. Matthew, we are a Christ-centered family of grace where all are wanted. We are committed to becoming who Christ says we are, growing, living, and sharing God's love one relationship at a time. And now Wendy is going to play some music for us, and we can let our hearts get ready for the service. <laughs>
Thank you, Wendy. That was beautiful. Um, some of us have been looking at the Book of Common Prayer, which is just full of beautiful prayers from people that we are descendants of their faith. And uh, so there's all kinds of prayers in there. So occasionally I'm going to read some out of it, and this morning I'm going to read one for our opening prayer. So just please join me in prayer. Dear God, dear Heavenly Father, who makes us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the days to come may be spent in your favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. We just thank you and praise you when we give you our service. We lift up Cliff to you. We lift up our songs to you. I just pray that you would open all of our hearts to hear the message you want us to hear today. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand. Please stand and join me for our hymn of praise, number 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Here I am, Lord. It's number 593. 
There was a misprint in the book. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning and we just turn broken hearts over to you and and we know that whatever situations are going on and um, my goodness, the families that you showed us in the Bible that just made it through, we just 
give our families to you, Lord, this morning, and we just pray that your will will be done. And I just pray for peace in a lot of situations that we know about. And we do thank you that we have a place here that we can gather together and that this room is just full of people who are turning their hearts and their minds toward you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just lift up Audrey this morning and pray that she will get to feeling better. And we lift up Nancy Shunky and her family as they are memorializing her sweet mama this morning. And we just pray for Greg and her, her Nancy's mama's daughters and that you'll just be with them. We just lift up Cliff and as he brings our message this morning. And we, we thank you so much for GL's recovery. And we pray for Michael's dad and his tough time and for Michael and Penny as they help him. And we lift up Scott and Faith in their newly married time and just pray that you'll just be right there in the middle of all of that. And just uh, we praise God for them and the ministry that they are going to have together. We pray for everything that's happening in Turkey and our uh, connection with that and just pray that, you, that, that even that country will be in your will. We lift up Brady to you and ask for recovery for him. And we pray for Marina this morning. We lift up Jack and Booty. And we pray for Terry and Kathy. And we just pray for complete healing of those bodies. You'll just take care of those precious people that we love. And now we just lift up together all of our voices and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I ask our ushers to come down uh, uh, this morning to take up our offering. We've got a great summer plan. Uh, Youth Activities Week is coming up, and so I want you to put this on your calendar. I don't remember the day. June 9th? 9th? Uh, we don't know. All right, but it's the first, the first full week of June, Thursday night. We have rented uh, the pool at Clapp Park from 7 to 9 p.m., all right? All you guys are invited. The whole church is invited, okay? We're going to have homemade ice cream. We're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have all the stuff that you guys are going to bring, all right? So uh, um, so I really want to encourage you all, invite your friends, uh, get your neighbors coming, all of your children, grandchildren. It's going to be great. We have the pool to ourselves. There's lifeguards there and stuff. So we've, uh, we're just going to have a really great time that night. So uh, anyway... The way that you give helps us to be able to do stuff like that in our community and stuff. So thank you for the way that you're giving. Uh, Lord, we do ask that you bless every, every cent that goes into this plate, every penny that's given online, every dime that's mailed in to this church, God. Lord, that we can go and that we can show the world you, that we can go and we can build your kingdom here, showing them the way that you love us and the way that you love them and the way that we love them, God. So we love you, Jesus. Please bless this tithe. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. I ask our children if they'll come down for our children's church this morning. And so we've got a real, y'all put your dancing shoes on. Y'all going to do some dancing up here, okay? All right. I'm real excited about that. Here we go, really. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Joy, joy down here. Where? Down here. Everybody get your happy faces on. And I'm so happy. So very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Down here in my heart. And I'm so happy. So very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Down here in my heart. And I'm so happy. So very happy. That's great, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. All right, how many of y'all have a celebration dance? 
Anybody have a celebration dance, a dance that you do when something really good happens or you win something or you had a really great day? Anybody? Y'all want to see mine? Okay, here we go. Ready? Everybody give me a hand right now. Go ahead and clap and encourage me, okay? okay. Here's my celebration dance. Alicia, you got one? No. Charlie, you got one? No, girls, y'all have one? Celebration yeah, dance? You, you want to do it? Y'all give them a hand. Y'all want to do it? Yeah. No? No? Uh -uh. Not for y'all to see, okay? Right. Yeah, you got one? You got a celebration dance? Y'all think Carmen has a celebration dance? I say, woohoo. There's her. <laughs> woohoo. Let's all do that on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Woohoo. All right, I like that one. Yeah. So, First Thessalonians five eleven. Y'all look up here. Let's all read this together, okay? Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Today we have a great day that we are going to encourage someone that's graduating. And you know what? One day you'll be graduating too, and people will encourage you. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, the guy with the funny hat on. Right there. That's right. His name is So. So on the count of three, we're going to cheer for So, and we're going to encourage him. Ready? One, two, three. Yay! But you know what? We don't have to wait until you turn 18. Gosh, it seems so old, doesn't it? Until you turn 18 years old to celebrate you. You know why? Because Jesus celebrates you each and every day of your life. Amen, church? And so we want to celebrate you right now because we love who you are. We love what God is doing inside of you. And we love the fact that you were made especially for your families. There's no one else like you. There's no one else as special as you. There's no one else as handsome or as beautiful as you are. You are a wonderful, beautiful child of God and his best friend of which he will never leave you. All right, so we're going to celebrate you real quick. It's going to get loud in here. Are y'all ready? Are you ready? Uh, people are going to cheer for you. Okay, on the count of three. Ready? They're going to cheer for you. Yeah. You okay? He's <laughs> <laughs> like this, man. He's bracing for it, man. Yeah. Okay. Y'all better make it loud now. I built you up. Ready? Right? Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! Did you hear all that? It felt good. Okay, well, let's do it again then. A little bit louder. It feels good, huh? When people encourage you. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! Stop hopefully not ill. Y'all should see all the smiles up here. And you know what? The way they encourage you, you can encourage your moms and your dads and your brothers and your sisters and your friends and even people that you don't know. So let's do that today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your encouragement. God, that gives me chills. Kind of makes me want to go out and encourage someone else just the way that you encouraged me. We love you, Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Y'all are great. Y'all can go with Carmen to Children's Church, all right? And I bet y'all come up with some celebration dances today in there, okay? All right, y'all give them a hand as they go, church. All right.
have a great celebration today. Soul Meyer right there, man. So, yes, what a great accomplishment for you, man. So proud of you. You guys, y'all watch this. I woke up to the summer shining through Calling on my friends asking what's the move Feeling a little different, I'm on something new Today, today I ain't gonna let no clouds get in my way The only road I'm walking is the one I pick Catch me sitting in the sun, no time for shade Today, today Ooh. This is the day that the Lord has made and I ain't gonna let it slip away. I'm gonna be joyful. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm gonna be joyful. Today. I'm gonna be joyful. Ooh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, gonna be joyful. Uh, I got the feeling that you get when you get new kicks. Bell ringing on the last day of singing, yeah. High fiving everybody, but we out of here. Today, today. So fast, life comes and goes. Make it last, best slow your road. They don't take it as a choice, but you gotta know that today's, today's the day. Ooh. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I ain't gonna let it slip away, nah. I'm gonna be joyful. Gonna be, I'm gonna be joyful. Stay. I'm gonna be joyful. Yes, I am, yes, I am. I'm gonna be joyful. Today, today. I got the joy down to my heart, down to my heart. Down in my heart, I got the joy, joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I got the J-O-Y, down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I got the joy, joy down in my heart, too dang, too dang, mm. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have questions about some of that whenever we had uh, lunch together, okay? But, um... So will you and Jennifer come up here real quick? We're going to, uh, Cliff's going to give you a presentation, so, and uh, um, and then uh, we're going to pray over you guys. And what a blessing it is to have you uh, here man, with us today, celebrating this moment. And so what a beautiful baby boy you have, right? Yeah. Jennifer? Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. But, uh, yeah, we just got yourself a little study Bible here for you. Oh, actually, let me turn that on. Oh, no. Okay. All right. So we got a little study Bible for, here for you that you can always have something to remember us by. And Thank you so Even much. when you're off, who knows where, you can always have something right there. You have God right there with you. Yeah. And you just add your fingertips. Church family, those that feel comfortable, why don't y'all come up here and we'll just put our hands on these guys and pray over them. Y'all come as you feel that. <clears throat> Jesus, there are, are many mile markers for us, God. Lord, and uh, these are even more reason why we should come together and celebrate that accomplishment, but also you, Father, for creating us and for giving us great people around us that have helped us, and that have loved us, Lord. And so I pray over this young man right here, Father, as he graduates and he goes into the wild world, Lord, Father, I pray for him as he shares uh, your love that has been shared with him and he gives to your kingdom the kingdom that's been given to him father and he shares his gifts that you have installed in him father with people around him god lord we pray that you work in soul in a mighty and powerful way and we pray that you work through soul 
in a mighty and powerful way, Father. And Lord, I thank you so much for his mama. Amen, church. Amen. Thank you for his mama, God. Lord, the fruits of her labor, Father, uh, as a mom will watch a child grow up, Father. Lord, I pray that you just scratch this moment in her mind right here of the rewards of following your kingdom, God. And Lord, we thank you so much for them as a family and for the families to come, Jesus, Lord. Now bless this man. Give him courage. Give him peace. Let him never forget, Father, that he is only called to an audience of one, to belong to you before doing anything else in this world. And he does belong to you. Thank you for Saul. And everybody said? Amen. 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 All right. I hope that you guys can come and uh, uh, join us afterwards. Um, as uh, we are going to, told, I told the guys as they cook the burgers to leave the doors open so uh, it'll, the, the, the whiff of the, of the barbecue charcoal will come down here and it will guide us to that. So we've also got another special treat today. Cliff is preaching for us. Amen. And so, brother, I'm so, come on up here, man. I'm so excited uh, that you are doing this as well. And so let me just pray. Father, thank you for Cliff, God. Now, Lord, make his words your words, Father. Thank you for his heart, Lord. And thank you for his obedience to you. And thank you for his willingness and his excitement, God. Lord, uh, what you have done, are doing, and will do in this young man will be more than we could ever imagine, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being his Lord and Savior. In your name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Okay, you got All right. It. Yeah, is this still? Okay, hang on. All right. So good morning, everybody. It's a nice day outside. And let's see if I can figure out how to turn this thing a little up. <laughs> we'll just do this for a little bit. All right. Yeah, that's not going to work. Hang on, what are we going to move this over? Technical difficulties for a little bit. Thank you, thank you. All right, so for those of you who don't know, my name's Clifton Holloway, and if I guess it's a hot topic recently on how to spell my name or what my name is. But uh, I'm the youth pastor here at St. Matthew. I'm um, originally from Garland, Texas, which is about 20 minutes east of Dallas, though right now my roots are in Albuquerque, as my mom decided to get on out of there when I graduated high school. I've got a twin brother who goes studies economics at the University of Texas. Um, I personally study wildlife biology at Tech, um, and I have an older brother who just moved into a new apartment this week, so that's actually really good for him. He's 23, um, but that's just little bit about myself. Um, we're going to get a little Shakespearean on you this morning. Um, so we're going to read from Psalm 23 in the King James Version. And it goes, the Lord is, actually is that, yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. So the psalm is pretty recognizable, but for good reason. It's all it's kind of talking about joy, um, but I, let me... I want to tell you a little bit of my own life, and then I think it will give you a little bit better understanding of it. So two things in particular bring me closer to the Lord and enhance my faith. The first is that God blessed me with wonderful parents, including my mom, who's listening on the phone or on the thing right now. Um, she puts up with a lot of crap that I give her, and thankfully the Lord blessed her and my dad with extreme patience. Um, when I was 16, my father, unfortunately, suffered a heart attack, and ultimately, ultimately lost the battle. Here's the thing, though. Yes, it was a tragedy, but I feel like I gained more from it than I ever thought possible. After all, he was a loving father to me for the most important part of my childhood. And, I mean, I could ask him questions all the time, and he'd 
answer me, and who knows if those answers were right, but it made me feel better. So that's what, and that's, and he, and that, he brought me joy, and that's what I, I can be eternally thankful to him for that. Um, let's see. And although it was sudden, um, it was, it was something I kind of knew was inevitable, because after all, death and life are a natural cycle of life. Our, um, and that was gi- this was gifted to us by God for us to do his will here on earth while attaining eternal paradise in heaven when our time on earth has come. Knowing that lightened the emotional load immensely. And though he may not be here physically, I know that he hears me and he helps me to the point of his exhaustion. Um, there are plenty of tough points like August 11th, his birthday, January 17th, the day he died, and Father's Day. But I know he is close. The other day, I was finding myself sitting at a bus stop, and all I wanted to do was call him and hear his voice. Um, This brings out another thing, is like, if you all have any voicemails or whatnot from your older relatives, it's always a great idea to keep them, because you never know in the future, it's just really nice to be able to hear them. Um, But you know what? Honestly, he can always hear me, because he's up in heaven looking down on me, and I can just talk to him. And this might put a little bit of a funny scene in your head, but when I get those urges, I really don't hold back. Like, I'll just find myself driving on the highway, and I start talking like he's in the passenger seat. And maybe someone may look at that and think I'm schizophrenic, but, you know, I like it. Um, and though, and trust me, though, he answers me. He answers me through the signs on the road. He answers through me through the cars that I see on the road. And he answers me definitely through the people I see on the road. And especially through what I'm driving through, Um, which that kind of brings me to another point, is that nature is a pathway for connection to God. Deuteronomy 11, um, chapter 11, verses 13 through 15 reads, And if you will indeed obey my commandments that I command you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, he will give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the later rain, that you may gather in your grain and your wine and your oil, and he will give grass in your fields for your livestock, and you shall eat and be full. Additionally, Romans chapter 1, verse 20 reads, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. I mean, people are without excuse to know him. You see the wonderful things he, crea- he creates for us, and every time we look at those, we can be reminded of him, in his absolute power. Um, from views of mountains breaching the clouds to the southern plains blowing with life to the magnetic illusions in the sky, the idea that a person can make that is unfathomable. But that's the thing, though. God is no mere person. He is unimaginably great, and sitting here trying to make a scientific deduction is pointless simply because we are unable to comprehend his magnificence. John Wesley states in Sermon on the Mount 3, The great lesson that our blessed Lord inculcates here is that God is in all things, that we are to see the creator in the glass of every every creature, that we should use and look upon nothing as separate from God, which indeed is a kind of practical atheism. But with the true magnificence of thought, survey heaven and earth and all that is therein, as contained by God in the hollow of his hand, who by his intimate presence holds them all in being, who pervades and activates the whole created frame, and is in a true sense the soul of the universe. Additionally, John chapter 1, verse 3 reads, through, a him, through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. They call it faith for a reason, because maybe some bearded guy with a Morgan Freeman-esque voice hasn't appeared in front of me, but I know that he is there, leading me in my life. Back to the Psalm, Psalm 23 um, whenever it mentions about I, I shall not want, um, I actually had a friend tell me the other day or the real meaning behind this, and it's like in Israel, it wasn't all just luscious green grass everywhere. There were patches of grass that the shepherds would leave the sheep to. That's what God is doing us. Maybe we're walking through some desert, some sand with no life in it at all, and we, we don't really see an end to it, but eventually... He leads us to that green patch of grass beside the still water where we can enjoy his wonderful word and know that he loves us. Um, let's see. 
the Gandalf depiction is a something pretty easy to grasp, but you know what I like to imagine? My dad or my mom, because they guided me in the beginning of my faith like God commanded them to, and God surely was guiding them in their teaching. Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 through 8 reads, These commandments that I give you today are to be in your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk, al walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Moments like that right there is where God is present. I see God and my dad getting pissed about me driving a four-wheeler and drifting it around trying to impress my friends, but he's just trying to keep me safe. I see God and my mom working her donkey off providing for my life because God, he never quits. I see God and my friends coming to watch me talk about things that are may or may or haven't said to them because God is a supporter. God is present in the best of life, but also the lowest of death. Proverbs 27, verses 34 through 35 reads, Be sure you know the conditions of your flock. Give careful attention to your herds, for riches do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. Thinking back on it, I think my dad got something great. He was comparatively old with smoky lungs and a love for hops and barley, so it was not unbeknownst to me that I would lose him while I was young. The morning I lost him, I remember heading out the back door while it was still dark outside and saying bye to him as I went off to school, saying, love you. I got called home on my last day of the class, which was tennis, and I was told my mom was the one who called, and that kind of made me wonder because usually my dad was a stay-at-home dad towards the later part of his life, and usually he was the one who was calling the school and picking me up or whatnot. Um, so I was like, ah, it's kind of weird. Um, but uh, and I remember driving home over Lake Ray Hubbard. It was sunny and about 75 degrees outside, so it was honestly pretty nice. Um, but right there is when I was like, "Man, like, is this is this that day that he might have that I might have lost him?" Um, but as I pulled up to my house, I noticed his truck was gone, and man, that that sent me somewhere else. My brother was picked up at school by a family friend, Catherine. And I just remember her complaining about the neighborhood the school was in, um, seeing as she didn't really like it. She thought she was going to get mugged. She wasn't. I just want to make that clear. She was just a little freaking out. Um, but she wouldn't tell me what was going on. And I was just kind of like, oh, man. Um, my mom showed up later with sunglasses on. And I was like, ah, man, I wonder what she's crying about. Um, and we went into her room, and she broke the news to all of us. And honestly, at that point, all I wanted to do was get away and just start processing everything myself. And I, pro I managed to do that for about 30 minutes. And then from th that point on, I was just showered in love from my family members coming, from my youth group, who even drove all the way to Waco for my dad's funeral. And I barely even knew about it. And it, I saw people there that I never guessed would be there in a long time. But, you know, I, that's just some, that's the power of God, is that he does things that you don't expect. He does things that are amazing, and you just have to be eternally grateful for that. Um, afterwards, I tried going back to normal, and though I felt sad, I also felt more mature and smarter. After that, and after all, after that day, he had no hacking cough, no stress, but most of all, he made it to the kingdom of heaven, and to that, I'm kind of jealous of. Um, I have to thank God and my dad for all the experience that I got from that, because without it, I don't think I'd have the same relationship I do with my mother. I wouldn't have come to Lubbock and met the friends and family that I have, and I wouldn't have been as close with God. Maybe some of y'all have similar experiences, and, that, and to that I encourage you to look at what a tragedy may have caused, and you might see that the blessings received are like a river coming from a small, desolate point on a mountaintop to a raging current carving love into the world. This Easter was also another example of something that pulled me to God as it goes along with the beauty of nature. After church, I came home and watched the Chronicles of Narnia, that whole lion, witch, in the wardrobe thing. And that's actually a great movie that's tied to Christianity. And you can watch it with your family and with little kids, and especially around Christmas as there's a nice bearded man there that gives presents. Um, more, but, the most, but moreover that, the author of the book was a man named Clive Staples Lewis, more commonly known by C.S. Lewis. Uh, he was a man of many talents, one of which was theological writing, his biggest book being Mere Christianity. I learned a lot from another one of his works, though, The Joyful Christian. This is a collection of writings by C.S. Lewis that are labeled accordingly, 
and they cover just about every topic you can think of, from doubt to the Holy Spirit to the presence of alien life. One I want to highlight today, though, is his writings specifically about joy. He talks about standing next to a currant bush beside a nursery and through a rush of something supernatural, receiving an ethereal feeling that faded soon after. Later, he mentions reading a poem, a poem about Balder, who's some Nordic dude from a long time ago. In his mind, he was being transported to great Scandinavian skies, blessed by snowy mountains with flowing streams. Again, that's God's love. That you can, that's God's presence right there and the amazing things he creates for us. Um, he also describes reading books about the beauty of autumn and then transporting himself to swaths of falling leaves and cool winds. These scenic moments brought about a brief desire, a desire that can be described only as joy. Joy is what God wants from us and is where we can feel closer to him. Over spring break, my mom, my brother, and I went to the Navajo Nation outside of Chinle, Arizona, and got to see the wonderful Canyon de Chile, which is actually, for those of y'all who are following the whole summer mission project, we're going to be on the east side in New Mexico, and this is actually on the west side, right on the other side of the reservation. Um, and the, and I, in that canyon or whatnot, we sadly weren't able to go down there, but there have been natives living down there for God knows however long, um, and they still go by their normal ways, and it's, it's honestly an amazing place to go see. We are actually, that doesn't normally snow there, so when we went, even though it was probably like 35, 40 degrees, it was a great sight to see, um, seeing as it's not really that common. Um, let's see, let me, let me find where I was again. Um, so, in, in that moment, as I was walking with my mom and my brother through this, I mean, we might have been yelling at each other through, throughout of it and saying, slow down and whatnot, you're going to run off the road. But that whole day, I was feeling joy. I felt joy in the snow coming down, and it's something that I don't normally get to experience. And seeing that, it, it gave me a feeling that I was really loved by God, about the great things he can do in my life, the great people that were around me. And again, I, can only, I can't be thankful enough what he brings us um, and it kind of made me think that even though I had struggled here and maybe my grades were falling and maybe I had to study for a test it was negligible at that point is that I was experiencing a flood of joy and I wanted to take it in as much as I could and I encourage you all to take it in as much as y'all can as well to spread the joy and even in moments of silence God can be shouting you answers you just have to be present after all, joy is a gift from God and that cures our ailments, that fuels our bodies, that connects us with our Lord Jesus Christ. Joy is what keeps us going after death. It keeps my dad going after death. It keeps my grandparents going after death. It keeps their thought in my head of always thinking of them and knowing that they're helping me, looking down on me, trying to make me a better person. If I can leave you all anything this Sunday, it's that the darkest moments can have the brightest lights. They just need to be clicked on. To click them on is up to you, but joy is what fuels that click. If you find yourself lacking that joy in your life, come and talk to me. Come and talk to Todd. Go and talk to your loved ones and make a plan for joy. Make a plan. If you could be having, you could be a really low moment, and if you are, please let us help you. Um, this can be from just going shopping to getting out into the wild and just experiencing the love that God has awarded us. God wants us to have a life devoted to him, to spread his word to our loved ones, and to share in our joy with one another. Um, and if the band wants to come on up, they're welcome to. Um, and again, if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to talk. I can talk to you for a really long time about this. Um, and, but, uh, and again, we have some burgers getting ready afterward, and we would love to have you join us. I'll hand it over to Todd now. We amen to that. Yes, give him a hand. That's good. Yeah. We're gonna um yeah. We're gonna Cliff come down here with me for a second. We that um that was not a, a trick on the music stand all right man okay so i'm so sorry about that i've 
really never ever seen anything like that before in my life. So, um, but you know what? What a great uh, visual about joy, you know, right there. I mean, Dixie's trying to find her music right now. You know what I'm saying? So we have stuff spread out all over the sanctuary, and yet you persevered and went on. And, and I want to tell you that what a touching sermon. And I really want to encourage guys, if uh, you are at a moment where you don't have joy, where you don't feel joy, there, Cliff's backing it up. Isn't he so smooth? Yes. Um, Cliff's going to be down here to pray with you if you want to come pray about maybe you've got stuff that you're going through. Um, this song that we're closing with, The Waymaker, I think you just amen that song, man, because God made a way for you, and he makes a way for all of us. Amen. Amen. So you stand here as long as you feel comfortable and pray with people and stuff. So, And maybe you want to come up and pray for Cliff. Guess what? That's allowed too, right here. He's going to be right here. Give him another hand. He did a wonderful job, brother. Yeah. Amen to that. Mm. come as you feel that it would not hurt our feelings at all if we had a pile of people up here praying for joy for the world praying for joy for our kids praying for joy for our schools praying for joy for the summer that's coming up so come as you feel that Good. 
so good to us church family he never stops working praise you Lord Jesus thank you for not giving up on us God that is who you are that is who you are that is Father, thank you so much for our time of worship here together. And Lord, for the words spoken through your beloved son, Cliff, God, to us, God, we thank you, Father, for that. Now, Lord, equip us as we go, living out of that joy that Cliff says is provided by you, that you have so faithfully and obediently provided for us, Lord, no matter what, no matter where, no matter when, God, we love you. Go in power, church family. Head right down that hallway and grab some burgers right now. God bless you all. And all of God's people said, amen.